New, 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 new. Yeah. New. <laughs> you're singing over the new song. It's this sad, is, I know. It's okay? All right. I think that's like the best part. You, that you're... It's so messy. You're layering the, the new song. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, All right, let's whatever. let's start off with uh, these buttons. Oh, these are really cute. So um, I don't really know what these are for, but I can't help it. I know what they're for. I mean, I know what they're for, but like they're it's just for turning on and off things. Well, and, yeah, but... and and you're probably saying, boy, these are boring because they don't light up. Nope, they do. They light up. So they're little buttons, and uh, I would have kind of maybe liked a generic, like just a point. But uh, yeah. the only ones available right now were these ones more. that had um, uh, power symbols on them. So I'll show them on the yeah. overhead. Yeah, we're going to the overhead. You I'll do need to have a um, choke resistor. So there's just a little 10K resistor, or a 100K resistor I put in here. Um, and yeah, so this is um, red and we have blue. There was a green one, but it was really dim. So I was like, I don't really want to carry the, the green one. But it basically has the same footprint as a six millimeter button. So like, I'll take this out. It has the same footprint as a six millimeter tactile button but it also has these two legs that you can bend out and then, um, you know, they're very long, so you can kind of bend them around yeah. and turn them into um, like a light up LED. And the button and the LED are separate. Like the LED is this part and then, this, sorry, the, um, the button is this bottom part and then the LED like snaps on top. So, you know, you can have it light up when it's off, when it's on, whatever, it's very customizable. Um, and you can, yeah, basically just use it with the normal six millimeter tactile footprint and then just add two holes on either side for the LED. I don't know, fun little, fun little icons. I, okay. think, they're, I think they're cute looking. All right. You Hi. Yeah. Beep, beep. So, very I like, adorable. I like them. I like them All right, too. next up, I've got a whole bunch of these. Yeah, I got a whole mess of these. Yeah, um, you know, sure. I can tell like there's one supplier and I was like, oh, let's buy like yeah. one of every type. So they are, I think these are pretty useful. Yes. <laughs> so, so this is this, this is the real photo because this is like okay well you got an HDMI yeah, it's thing HR character. What, what does that mean why are you talking about this so these Good are question. A, a collection of um, terminal block breakouts for various audiovisual type things like we have the terminal blocks for RCA yeah. and 3.5 millimeter but I was like well you know what about more complicated stuff but you know I found them so these are breakouts for like HDMI and. I wouldn't necessarily use this for like, oh, I'm gonna build my own HDMI cables. It's not cost effective. Like with all the terminal blocks, it's cheaper just to buy HDMI cables like if you wanna build one. But if you need like a special HDMI connection or like you're building your own HDMI generator using an FPGA or um, like some microprocessor or yeah. you're doing some like DVI to HDMI You might be conversion. troubleshooting a DVI, or sorry, HDMI output device and you're just like, uh, and you might have to Run. There might be all sorts of like yeah. you want to break this out to like some HDMI decoder and coder, or you want to um, yeah. you want to just borrow the power and I squared C pins, whatever. Um, yeah. This is much nicer than splicing a cable. So just send some of these to Bunny. He does HDMI. Yeah, so. I mean, like I, I only got like a hundred of each, but I think they're pretty cool. Um, so yeah, these these have terminal blocks and they're they're nicely soldered. Um, the HDMI ones are a little uh, pricey, so I got versions that have. Um, HDMI. Also, I got ones. Sorry, I got ones that yeah, do not have, have the terminal blocks. So yeah, I've got other photos, and the ones that have terminal blocks I just showed. Here's one that doesn't. That doesn't. It's, a, it's the exa exact yeah. same thing, but I'll it's a couple bucks guy. cheaper. Yeah. Because it doesn't have terminal blocks. You, you just saw terminal blocks. Here you go. Yeah, these are the point one um, inch terminal blocks are a little pricey. So you have, you know, this one's a little bit more compact, maybe, but they're just uh, cute little like DIY HDMI connectors. I mean, it's weird. Like I don't. I've only thought of like one time in which I could have used this. Um, there was one time I was uh, I was detecting whether a television was on or off for an uh, art display, and the art yeah. display was supposed to like detect when people walked by and turn on the TV. But the problem is like sometimes the TV wouldn't turn on or off, so I actually ended up splicing the HDMI cable mm. to read the voltage on the I squared C yeah. pins because that would tell me. Idea. It was like a weird hack, but it like worked. Yeah, but if you think about it, um, most like art installations have a giant TV thing that turns on when you walk by. So maybe this will be like for the 2,000 people who need that. Okay. I, I think this is actually used for people who are making like weird custom runs. You can use a like Cat6 cable to make your own custom HDMI cable that's like 100 feet long. You're supposed, totally not supposed to do that, but like maybe you could. I actually don't know what these are even for. Yeah, okay. Like hard wiring. Anyways, All right. And then cool. we've got the other kind of version of these. Yeah, these are the sockets. Which is the, 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 the socket ones. So they're like, panel, they come in yeah. this like panel mount thing, so it's kind of clear, like, I, yeah. I really do and not you, know. And we did the same, uh, yeah. we did the same thing 
when we got these, so we got ones with and without the terminal blocks. Yeah, they're right. soldered on, terminal block, no terminal block. Um, yeah, you can panel good, mount yeah. it. Handy yeah, for, uh, for you know, when you want the other side of HDMI. So these are, you know, these are annoying connectors to, to solder to or SMT. You know, it, I was actually going to make an SMT breakout, but then it turns out this is actually, I think, way nicer than yeah. what I would have come up with. Um, especially since it has like a nice panel mount and you can yeah. you can connect to it and it's, it's all done for you. So I guess um, someone mentioned that I guess you could potentially like power something. You can make a an adapter and like steal power from it. Yeah, HDMI I think yeah, that's like one thing you can do because there's there's a that's weak fun. five volt power availability. Woo! To, yeah, I mean it's you well, could charge your phone. You could. It's like fifty milliamps, I think. Yeah. But you you can grab some some data or maybe you're you're doing some sort of weird man in the middle HDMI stuff. Ooh, this that's exactly fine. Exactly when you would want good to times. Use stuff. Um, and then you got some other types here. Yep. And so while I was at, I was like, ah, you know what else is really handy? Um, getting uh, DE15 and DE9s. Yeah. So this is DE9 male. Yeah, and female. these are actually. Yeah, I can see. These that. are actually what was like the. I was like, ah, these are gonna be the most handy. So this. I is think like ten times in my life, like this is exactly I what I needed, but I did. It didn't exist. You know, you know where you should be able to buy this stuff. Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Um, so this is, oh, can you go to the overhead and I'll show this off, off. So these are serial port connectors, what they're usually used for, but you know what? They're actually end up, these, these DE9s end up on a whole bunch of stuff, sometimes like joysticks or everything. like analog connectors or like equipment. So same deal, you get larger terminal blocks, but you still get terminal blocks. Um, they come in this nice yeah. case. They're low cost enough that I just got the version with term, term blocks. And then you've got the version that is um, plug and the version that's socket. I got these without any hex nuts because like you always get the wrong polarity. So I was like, you know what, like just no hex nuts. And so if you need to permanently attach, I mean, they do press fit pretty well. Yeah. If you need them to be stronger, you'll have to jig together your own 440s, I think, to create the hex nut. You know what I mean, the screw assembly? Like they have the slots for them, but I thought it would be confusing if they were included and like they're always the wrong, you know, you get mail type or the sock, whatever. Anyways, so you can press, press fit these. But great if you're uh, creating your own custom cable, like definitely there's times when it's like, oh, you need a null modem, but like with a diode in between or like there's all kinds of, yeah, you know, like the, um, remember like the um, Palm Pilot used one of these connectors, but it was like, weird or like you have a radio. Yeah. And it has one of these We were trying to get the, um, the Apple Quick Take camera working again. I need a serial yeah, for it. It's like, oh, what and was it's, always like, it's always like a non-standard. Oh, like DTR should be tied to like yeah. ground. I don't know. Anyways, this is this is where it's gonna be handy. This is gonna be handy. Yeah. For you okay. To do that. And then uh, the stars. Oh wait, no, I have one more. Oh, you got one more. Yeah. All right, you turn on the. Oh, and then um, yeah, the last set is the um, DE 15s. So uh, sometimes known as VGA connectors, but again, this uh, connector was abused and used for a lot of different stuff. Um, break out all of the pins. They're enabled by number, not by the VGA pins. But um, I've definitely had times when I needed this. I remember like making a VGA connection or a connector, or, like connecting to a VGA panel um, or CRT. Yeah. Or like if you, you know, there's ways you can like bit bang VGA. Like of all the video outputs, VGA is the easiest for a microcontroller or my computer to bit bang. So this would make it really easy to connect up and then and plug it in. I don't know. I think these are handy. Yeah, I can think no of soldering. I can think of five times where you and I need to do something, and you're just like, oh, "I'll just take this cable and chop it." I know. I keep chopping cables, but it's annoying. You know, by the time you end up chopping, you, you could just have one of these. And then it's sometimes you can't solder them, and you're splicing it. This would have just solved the problem. Or the, we just used the cable you may may, may not chop may be your own. That's true. Okay. Save a cable. Yeah. And use adapters. Okay. I'm not so making that's... any more cable trees, folks. Okay. Um, little... So now, Oops. the star of the show beside you are these. The feather. final feathers. These are final feather radios. Yeah. Um, we've like done two a week for a couple of weeks. Um, we're gonna get back into getting a lot of hardware out, but uh, we were traveling and stuff. So um, this is what we got this week. This is the Feather M0 with the RFM69 packet. Um, it is a uh, 433 or 900 megahertz mm -hmm. packet radio. It's not packet like AX25, it's packet and it packetizes the radio for you. It's like super easy to set up radio networks and links, way less expensive than XB, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And you don't have like, it's very lightweight. Like you can just transmit packets and receive them. Like you don't have like 
access points and like yeah. you know setting up like pairing and client master like this is just sending and receiving data very yeah. very easily. If you like all that complicated stuff and paying more, then there's other products. But this one, you're just there's d down the wireless for business. I, I was going to ask you because sometimes we get emails about the Laura line. So what should someone look at before they email us about frequencies and all that? What's the what's the mm. key part of of this particular product before they say, well, actually. Like which frequencies they should use yeah, on their own. Yeah. If they're depending on what ITU, International like Telecommunications Union, whatever um, country you're in, there's three of them: one, two, and three. There's different frequencies that are in the ISM band, which is the scientific and medical use band, the okay. in, industrial use band. In America, that's 915 megahertz. In, Kent, in like North America and so I think South America, it's 900 megahertz. Uh, 915. In most parts of Europe, it's, it's 433. And in Japan and then other parts of Asia, it's 868. Okay. And so depending on what, and you, you'll have to look on Wikipedia or like just Google around for what is the ISM band for your country, because um, again, it matters. So we have yeah. one 900 megahertz radio that can be tuned to 868 or 915. Okay. And we have a 433. So you can actually use the 433 legally in America if you're a ham radio. Gotcha. If you're an amateur radio. See, there are all the differences. Minor, but it matters. And yeah, but we have both. Basically, the thing is, most people who do electronics kind of know because they're like, oh, well, like all my yeah. devices are 433, so like I know that that's the, the legit one. But basically, Europe is 433, America is 915. And is that why Asia we have these different 16. ones? Yeah, so that's okay. why we have multiple frequencies. And then the lower radios are for a very long range. They use uh, this chirping. Um, uh, wideband method of communication so they can go very, very far. Mm. Um, that's very good when you're, when you're willing to spend a little bit more to get ultra long distance. Like a balloon? Like a balloon would be really good. Um, yeah, I saw actually a CubeSat that was using LoRa, which is freaking cool. Mm. Um, or just like long distances. A LoRa radio, long range is good, but you pay for it. It's more expensive. There's gotcha. licensing and patents involved with ah. it. So you're paying like 10 bucks, 15 bucks more. Whereas with the... Um, RFM radios, it's a basic FSK radio, okay. it's very simple, very low cost, um, but again, doesn't have as much range. I think these go about like 300 meters, and the LORAs go about two kilometers. Okay. And this one is which, which one? This is the lower cost RFM 69, the low cost okay. and what, FSK radio. And what's the um, megahertz, what's the frequency? What's we have the? 433 and 900. So is this 433? The green dot is not 900. This is 900. Yeah. And then so what you're saying is... But the photos are, I mean, it's basically the same photo. There's yeah. just one little dot that's all different. So what you're saying is... That's 43. That's 43. And that one is dot. okay for... Europe. Europe. Or, and America, if and you have America. a ham radio license. If you have a ham radio license. And okay. you don't turn encryption on. And a bunch of other things that ham radio people know because they took exams. Gotcha. So it sounds like ham radio license for this one. In, in America. The US. Yeah, in, in the US. America. Okay. All right. So these are the, the two. And you said the, the only difference on the product is... One has red dot. The red dot is the 433, because you know it's, it's written on the back yeah. of the module, which of yeah. course, when you buy the module, it is soldered onto a thing, so you don't know. So we get we get the factory to put a little green dot or a red dot to let you know what frequency band. Um, and 868, and, and the 915 is by far, we don't want to stock like all three, so the 915 mm -hmm. can be tuned down to 868. It's okay. fine. That's smart. Yeah, so you can just use that. All right. And honestly, you can actually, if you're doing like ham radio experimentation, you can tune the band. I mean, it's, a, it's an FSK, I think also OK, uh, OK uh, an ASK radio. You can use it for general purpose, like digital radio. So you can tune it around for different frequencies. Okay. Yeah. It, it, within the range of the analog front end. And what that lady did is, your products, good work. New, new, you did it. New, new.